Hello. Today we're going to be realizing the floor philosophy, but first, let's go over the decks. I have Bina, and for passives, I put on Keeping Stride from Zvi, Fervor from Leo, Mind Holler from Valerie or Anton, and I have Death Innervation from Eugen. Next, I have Olivier with Unlock, Graze to Grass, Multi Slash, Fire Dragon Slash, World of City, and Prescript, Emotional Turbulence, Augury Kick, and True Trigam Formation. And for passives, I have Lila's Health Hauler, Valerie Anton's Mind Hauler, Lou's Fervor, and Esther's Lux Potential. Next, I have Xiao with the same deck as Olivier, except True Trigam Formation is Raging Storm Love. And for passives, I have Unstable Page of the Crying Children's Volatile Passion, Gloria's Locked Potential, Anton and Valerie's Mind Hauler, and Lila's Health Hauler. Next, I have Primal Tear, and we'll be utilizing the Guard Stance, which is on this power, 2 Leap, 2 Energy Conversion, 3 Overcharge, and Beyond. <clears throat> and for passes, I have Bada's Charge Shield and Energy Discharge, uh, our Corpse Triple R Suit, Lila's Health Hauler, and Anton and Valerie's Mind Hauler. Finally, I have Yan with a very similar deck to Xiao and Olivier, except their unique page and augury kick have been replaced with Baleful Brand and Distorted Blade. For passives, Locked Potential, this one's from Hubert, I have Nikolai's Finishing Touch, and then Lila's Health Hauler and Valeria Anton's Mind Hauler. Alright, let's get into the fight. Alrighty. So, in this first phase, we'll be against a lamp and right off the bat you'll notice that one of your librarians is enchanted um, and so they're uncontrollable and we'll be casting dazzled targeting lamp who will be casting salvation which has a 25 to 25 slash counter die that instantly kills enchanted targets on hit and a 20 to 20 block counter die and they'll also be casting some copies of brood which has three 22 to 22 block counter dice so the intended way to do it is to use your light regen and other utility to clash into your own librarian. But since we have Bina, we have access to ranged pages, which can be used to eat the slash die. And we actually don't mind if our character gets staggered here because they'll immediately get unstaggered. So with these enchanted targets, it'll start with just one but on the next cycle will be two, and then two again, and then three. And then the um, phases go in like three or four scene chunks where first couple scenes, it'll just be the Salvation and Brood. But on the third scene, um, Lamp will be casting Darkness, which is a mass attack that we'll see later. And every time an ally dies, uh, they get permanent Feeble and Disarm, Lamp that is. And when all allies die, the state resistance is changed to fatal. So, that leads us to believe that we're supposed to kill all these eyeball chicks. So let's talk about them now. They're Pierce, Stagger Weak, Slash Normal, and Blunt Injured. So we're going to try and focus on their uh, Pierce. And so for Pages, they have Intense Stare, which is a 7-7 Pierce and a 3-8 Evade. The Pierce forces the character that it hits to attack the that character. Uh, so for example, this eyeball check is casting it and it's hitting the end. So if it hit the end, the end would only be able to hit this one. Um, unless of course the target is enchanted in which they'll still be targeting lamp. For this one, if you get hit, it's not the end of the world most of the time, but it's still like somewhat annoying because it restricts your choices. So try to beat it, but it's not the most, impo uh, not most important one. Nip, fortify, fortify, through five, all pierce. So not very strong, but if it's attacking someone with a lower speed value, all the dice get three power. So your best bet is to redirect it to something with a higher speed value if it's targeting something with lower. Well, the prescript works quite well here because it doesn't really clash well normally, but it can clash quite well into this one. Ocular Stab, in my opinion, their most threatening page, a 4-7 pierce and then a 6-10 pierce that inflicts 4 bind. 6-10 on 2 is kind of hard to beat, but we have a few options. Maybe not right now, but normally we have a few options in order to uh, beat that. But if you do get hit, again, not the end of the world. And then their last page, Clumsy Jog, 
fit a 8 evade through to 7 evade and on clash lose uh, give some self bind. So this one you don't need to worry about at all, but just keep in mind that they'll have it hanging for when you free hit them. So we're just going to try and take out these uh, eyeball chicks. And then after that we can go into the darkness phase and after that we should be able to kill. Alright, so this scene is going to be much the same as the first one, just clash here, and use your um, Bina to get rid of the slash counter die. Alright, for Abnormality Pages, we're going to take Weight of Sin and put it on Olivier because it synergizes really well with the 12 Fixers. Now we have the Darkness, so this is a 15 to 15 mass summation, but on use inflicts darkness on all characters this scene, including self. Darkness is just a power null and it'll last for two scenes, and it'll be casting two copies of Bite Off, which is um, 25 to 25 slash counter day. And so each page has two, and so with two he has four total. So here we're just going to clash into the mass attack and then kill the last bird. And then we'll be power nulled for one more scene and we'll have two enchanted targets, but as long as we have our Bina, we should be good. Alright, for the abnormality pages, all these tier 1 ones don't really do much. I can take Watchful Eyes and put it on Olivier because he's the main carry, but it doesn't matter too much. And so here we'll have two enchanted librarians, and Lamp will be casting two copies of Salvation, which means we need to have three different things to get rid of it, because the first one will take the uh, slash counter, then the second will take the blunt counter, and then the third one will take the second slash counter. So for Bina, Degraded Pillar works really well because the first one will eat the um, slash first slash counter, then the rest of the page will eat the block counter, and then we can have the or er, Degraded Fairy to kill the second slash counter. Alright. And now we can kill Lamp. These rolls again might look threatening at first, but with 20 Feeble and Disarm, this 25 is going to roll 5, which is not too hard to beat. Alright, so the second phase will be against Beak or Punishing Bird, and so there will also be four Keepers of the Black Forest, um, each with a speed value of either 1, 2, 3, or 4, and they will all have this Vigilance uh, passive, or I guess status, which gives them strength equal to the amount of times allies with lower speed were attacked. 
And so we're going to want to attack the 4, then the 3, then the 2, then the 1 kind of idea. But first, let's briefly talk about weak. So first off, Misty's not allowed. Offensive dice gain 50 power when clashing against defensive dice. So don't clash with offensive dice, obviously. Uh, and if the character takes damage, inflicts a punishy status on the attacker and enters punishment mode next scene. Uh, I don't know what it does exactly, but surely it's just a page that will one-shot your librarian. Uh, the punishment mode, stairs fatal, whatever, whatever. So, um, I'm gonna start off by casting three copies of Preen, which has two 3-3 three, three blunt dice, and then a 3-3 three three blunt counter die, which means you can't just free hit the cheese because of the um, blunt counter die, unless you can do a thumb with like some block dice first, which could work, but not what we're gonna do here. The Keepers of the Forest will alternate between attack and defense mode, and so there'll be two on attack, noted by them using their light, and two on the fence who do not. After you kill one of the birds, they'll become immobilized for a uh, couple scenes, and then after that they will they'll come back to full HP and stagger. So we're going to want to kill all of the keepers uh, fairly evenly, I guess, if that makes sense. So for pages, attack mode will have ring, which is a 4 to 8 blunt, 6 to 9 blunt, that breaks a speed that of target on hit. This one isn't extremely hard to beat, especially with some power boosts. True try information does good. Um, emotional turbulence does fine at this stage in the game. Uh, let's see what next. We have Whiffle, which is a 3 to 8 pierce and then a 3 to 6 block. <coughs> Sorry. This one is very easy to beat. You can also just ignore it. And then Pinioning, I think, is a 6 to 8 blunt, 5 to 8 blunt, 3 to 7 blunt, and all of them inflict a paralysis and binds next scene. So this one's the most threatening one, but it's still not too hard to beat. And another whiffle. And then for defense mode, they'll be casting Roost, which is just a bunch of 3 to 6 uh, block dice. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use our Bina to clash into... Um, the 4 speed one because she has ranged pages and then it doesn't matter what we do after that although I guess it would probably technically be best to um, clash into the other attack mode bird next with our 7s but it shouldn't matter too much because we don't really need to attack the defense birds right now tier 2 pages. I like taking Tilted Scale just because the extra HP is nice, Got some extra survivability. Salvation is also pretty good, but for now I'll just take Tilted Scale for on the here. Alright, so now we have a different page, Rapid Flutters, which is just a couple of um, evade dice. So what we can actually do here is just try and all in um, Beak right now and kill them, and if not, we can potentially get them with the mass attacks before they can go off with punishment. Uh, we might still need to deal with these, though, so we'll see what happens, I guess.
Alright. So here I think I'll just... Oh, actually I'll take punishments. Let's try it out. Next we'll have Judgment Bird. Let's just get skits out of the way. And so let's see. Judgment Bird takes no damage from uh, Bleed Burner Fairy. Has some marks of sin. That's for the sin mechanic. Uh, whatever, whatever. Doesn't particularly matter because we're gonna cheese it. So four piece, seven to nine, six to eight, five to seven, all slash, and the first two die gave haste. This one is fairly hard to beat with uh, your like two cost and stuff, but with three cost bombs like emotional turbulence, two try information, the like, should not be unmanageable. Next. Unjust skill, 5 to 8 slash, 8 to 10 blunt that inflicts paralysis next scene. This one, not too hard to beat, notably this one's going at one of the birds. But if it was, then 8 to 10 is like kind of hard, but again, one paralysis is not extremely threatening to you, so you can just tank it, or mitigate it, or whatever. But with some strength stacking, you should be able to beat it handily as well. Justice Astray, 6 to 10, 6 to 10 block, and then a 4 to 8 slash. This page is not threatening to your health, but it is fairly hard to clash into with those two 6 to 10 blocks. And uh, Justice Astray. And then all the birds will be casting Terrified Flutter, which is 3, 4 to 6 slash dice that inflict one fragile on hit next scene. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be casting a couple of mass attacks. Here. I don't think I have enough light here, so maybe we won't be able to do the cheese. We'll see. But the main idea is um, Tautia plus Distorted Blade immediately staggers all the birds, and then you can also just kill just a CN1. CN because 100 stagger is not quite. Uh, it's not quite enough with only 300 HP. But we might not be able to do that. But I'm still gonna try. Let's test it out, I guess. So here, just to see us staggered, and so we can just spend this time to um, recover our resources and get ready for the last phase. Notably, you don't need to get any strength or anything because you will be power nulled at the start of it. So now we have the last phase against Apocalypse Bird. Let's go get out of the way. So to start, everyone will be inflicted with um, Big Eyes, which is just a power null. And we got quite a few dice to uh, talk about. Some of them carry over between sub phases, but yeah. So we can start off with Surveillance, which will target the two librarians with the most heavy guilt, but no one has heavy guilt, so I think it just targets randomly. Um, and on use turrets are horrified next scene, which makes all of their stats resistances fatal and I think inflicts floor paralysis, but I'm not too sure about that, but we'll see um, very shortly. Next, the one hard part about this realization, in my opinion, brilliant eyes, uh, mass individual with 3, 4 to 7 pierce, but the first two will make you lose one light on hit. So. Not getting hit by this is probably one of the most important parts of the realization. Um, if you bring Blind Faith, you can beat it pretty easily. Uh, it's double good because this phase is weak to Slash, but that page is pretty useless outside of this specific scene. 
and I like all the pages in my decks right now, so I didn't, but if you're struggling with this part right here, then definitely a strong consideration. Next, we got Light Illuminating the Forest, 7 to 10 Pierce on a ranged page that on hit inflicts a Brind in Paralysis, and if a target is defeated with this page, it gets replayed. So we got two of those, and then Slam Down, this is a shared page, which is a 3 to 8 block that 3 to 6 blunt. Another slam Down, and then we got Prowl, I think this one's also shared, which is 3 to 8 block, 6 to 9 block that recovers some HP on Clash Win. And then a 5 to 7 slash counter that gains a strength on Clash Win. So, main thing, again, beat Brilliant Eyes, and then just Clash is normal for everything else. And, yeah, you'll still be powering all the next scene. So you don't need to start strength stacking just yet. So it's for paralysis and everything becomes fatal for um, the horrified sass defect. So now we got Peace for All, which is a 18 to 18 mass summation. And again, you're paranoid here, so be careful of that. Some more light illuminating the forest. We got Talon, which is a 47 slash, then 47 pierce, 46 pierce. This one's kind of just like a throwaway page. Your two cost value pages, three cost bombs, etc., should be able to take care of it quite easily. More slam down. Talon slam down, so yeah. Uh, deal with this mass summation, and then again, just clash as normal. the cost of two random pages in all of our hands by one. So it's a little annoying, but nothing that we can't play around. Well, that would be broken. Now we got some new pages. Come up and um, has four to eight, four to eight slash no six to nine pierce stats, inflicts six bleed and recovers 15 HP. And the slash die give the pierce die a bit of power on hit. And the max roll is increased by the amount of heavy guilt on targets, and again, we have no heavy guilt, so that doesn't matter. This one isn't too hard to beat, but you need to clash into it, because getting extra power on the pierce and then 6 bleed and recovering 15 HP is a little bit annoying. Next, we got Torn Mouth, 4 to 8, 4 to 8, 4 to 7, all slash, that inflicts 2 bleed. This one, again, is just kind of not too difficult to beat with uh, three cost bombs and even your two cost value pages, which is good. More Torn Mouth, more Slam Down, more Talon. And note that now it's Blunt Weak. And so, again, just clash as you normally would. And there isn't anything too difficult here.
here at more of the same. Got a tilted scale here. Uh, not sure what that's all about, because that's for the next phase, but whatever. Uh, we can go over it now. It's a 3 to 8 blunt, 6 to 10 blunt, and a 4 to 6 block. And both of the blunt dice inflict some heavy guilt, and a power nulls the page it's clashing into. So, again, we're just gonna try and stagger uh, Pocklip's bird, and then bring its health down to the next threshold, and then we can get on to the next phase. So now we can get into Judgment Bird. And so um, Long Arms will give status defect immunity and will purge all status ailments. It does unfortunately mean that um, our Volatile Passion will not work as effectively, but that's fine. So let's see, we got Talon, Tilted Scale, which we already went over, Prowl, Talon, Slam Down. So again, we're just gonna like. Clash is normal. Tilted Scale is the only threatening page. Pierce weak. So stagger and then kill should only take a couple of scenes. This is actually the end of the fight. Nope, we got one more scene. So, we got nothing we haven't seen before. And we can just kill here, and then the fight shall be over. Overall, quite a long fight there, especially that last phase having basically four sub-phases within it. But nothing too extremely difficult, there's no crazy high rolls to contend with, no really funky mechanics. Just a reading check and a patience check. But yeah, that's the fight. After realizing the floor of philosophy, you'll get access to these abnormality pages. Long Arms is quite simple, making the selected librarian take no damage from Burn, Bleed, Fairy, or Sin. This page is fine on its own, but comes with some other pages that we'll see in a bit. Big Eyes is an interesting page. The selected librarian enchants all enemies at the start of each scene, making them target the librarian and deal between 2-4 to four bonus damage with attacks. However, the selected librarian gains 1-2 to two power when clashing against the enchanted target, and they recover between 2 and 5 HP and stagger on clash win. This page is pretty insane in solo strategies and another piece of the combo. Small Beak adds a page Small Beak to the Librarian's hand that on play makes the Librarian take 5% max HP damage to restore one light and returns itself to hand. This page can come in clutch and as any Magic the Gathering player will tell you, life is a resource and trading HP for light is definitely worth it. As you might expect, this is another part of our combo. The Beast is a very strong page, but requires the selected librarian to have long arms, big eyes, and small beak. 
If they have all of those pages, then all enemies targeting the selected librarian will become unaffected by power gain or loss, and their minimum and maximum rolls will be lowered by 3, which is just 3 power loss that works with the power null. Additionally, at the end of each scene, all other characters take 15 damage and the selected librarian fully restores their light. If you manage to activate this page, then you probably just win due to all the boosts you get. Note that this takes both of your tier 1 pages and one of your tier 2 pages, so you miss it on the weight of sin, but that's probably fine. If you end up missing one of the three eggs, then you still have two options left. Guardians of the Forest gives one haste to all librarians each scene. Additionally, if all five librarians have one abnormality page, they gain 1 to 2 strength and endurance as well. This page also requires some build around, but is much easier as long as you don't stack a single librarian. If you can't trigger the bonus effects, then it's mostly useless and not worth taking. Thankfully, if you missed both trigger conditions, we still have Peace, which marks the first enemy the selected librarian attacks as an intruder. The intruder's attacks deal 2 to 4 less damage and stagger damage, and they take 1 to 2 bonus damage from attacks. This page is pretty solid against bosses, but not great otherwise, and it is more of a consolation prize for not being able to take the beast or guardians of the forest. In addition to these abnormality pages, you'll get access to these 5 ego. Lamp is a 3 cost mass individual rolling 7 to 14. Additionally, on combat start, enemies get power nulled. This is a great counter page to enemies that power stock on certain scenes for obvious reasons. Justicia is a 3 cost melee page that rolls 15 to 25 blunt. Additionally, on hit, it deals 10% of the target's max HP as damage to a max of 50. This page can decimate boss's HP, but is otherwise just okay. Beak is a 4 cost melee page rolling 7 to 10 slash, 7 to 10 pierce. Additionally, on use, two random pages in hand have their light cost reduced by 1 until used. Note that this doesn't stack. This page is mostly for utility, becoming a pseudo 2 cost once you use both of the pages, but isn't stellar. Twilight is a 5 cost mass individual rolling 6 to 8, 5 to 12. Additionally, both the dice inflict 1 paralysis on hit next scene. This is just a generically decent page, but rolls a little bit low on 1. Finally, Apocalypse is a 5 cost mass summation rolling 20 to 25. Additionally, on use, if the user is below half HP, the die gains 8 power rolling 28 to 33, and the page itself deals 150% damage to targets below half HP. This page is fantastic if you can trigger both conditions, decent if you can trigger one, and not great if everyone is healthy. Thankfully, since you'll only be getting this page at emo 3 or higher, it's quite likely that one or more characters will have fallen below half. Personally, I'd prioritize getting Lamp, Justicia, and Apocalypse. Beak doesn't do quite enough for me to want it over Justicia, and Twilight has a much lower ceiling than Apocalypse. In the next video, we'll be realizing the floor of religion. I'll see you soon, and as always, thank you for watching.